Hello everyone, my name is Barrick, and today I'm going to answer one of the most common questions that I get, which is, how does the view cone system in DREAD work? So I've put together a very simple example project that will show you just that. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with DREAD, this is what we're talking about. On the screen you see a player character right here in the middle, and the player character follows the mouse with a view cone. You can also move the player around, of course. And anything that is blocked by a wall, for example, is invisible to the player because it would be invisible to the player character. And as we walk around and explore, you can see that as we see things for the first time, they pop up into view, which makes for a neat explorational effect. I'm going to show you exactly how this works with some very basic code. And from there, you can expand on it to add nifty effects and all kinds of optimizations or what have you. So let's take a look and see what this game is made of. So we have a very basic room laid out, and there's only three objects in the game. There's the wall objects, there's the player character object, and then there's this little hidden object that is called shadow control. And shadow control is the object that actually casts black shadows out from each one of these walls at the angle from the wall, from each corner of the wall, to the player. And that's what creates the, um, the overlay that masks all of the other objects that may be in the level. So for example, if the player is on the other side of a wall and an enemy is on the other side of the player, then the player won't be able to see the enemy because the shadow that is cast from the wall will block it out. So let's take a look at each of the objects. We can start with the player object, which is very, very basic. There's only one piece of script and it's only this big. And it's just to control the character. Move with the WASD on the X and Y axis and set the direction of the character to the direction between the character and the mouse location on the screen. That's it. And of note is that the depth for this character object is negative one. That means that it is closest to the screen in comparison to the other objects. The wall's depth is at zero. So it's kind of one step underneath the player object. And that way the player will always be on top and the walls will be underneath. The wall has also just one script and it's a little bit more complicated but not too much. This script will check and see if the wall is supposed to be visible and if it is then it will make it visible and keep it visible so that we kind of map out the world as we explore. And the way it does this is it sets one variable that we call check visible to zero at the beginning of the step. Then what it does is it uses a script that I wrote called in view. And that's this little script right here. And the in view script takes three arguments. The first argument is the object that is the one doing the viewing. The second is the target object, the object that we're checking to see if it is in the, the uh, first object's view. And then the third argument is the field of vision size for that particular uh, viewing object. So you can modify the field of view to be 90 degrees as it is in our little example, or 120 degrees, which it is in dread, or whatever you want to have in between. So if you want to narrow the vision down, you can do that, or you can expand it however you want. So first, the wall checks to see if it's in the view of the player. And if it's within that view cone arc, then what it does is it checks between each one of its four corners to see if it's colliding with another wall. So if there's another wall in between 
the current wall and the player, then obviously it's not going to be visible because there's a wall in the way. So it will add one for each one of the four corners that is not visible. Then at the end, it will check to see if all four corners are not visible. If any one of the corners is visible, then it will turn the, the wall object visible and thus making it show up on the screen. And if the wall is not inside the player view cone, then it automatically sets the all four corners of the wall to be invisible so that it doesn't pop up as soon as it, uh, if it's not inside the view cone. And that's all the wall does. Very simple, but it creates a nice effect. The shadow control object is the one that is the most complex. And even then, it's not all that complex. On create, it creates a data structure called a stack. And we call that stack draw shadow. In the draw event, we do this code. And this is all it is. First, we go through and we add all of the walls to the draw shadow stack. At this point, you could add in some optimization effects. For example, if the wall is visible, then add it to the stack just so that it's drawing less uh, shadow polygons. But for simplicity's sake, we're just going to draw all of the walls. So it, on every step, it adds all the walls to the stack. Then it takes and draws all of the wall shadows. So while the stack is full, it takes and removes the first wall from the stack and saves that ID, because we're saving the ID of each wall in the stack. Then it takes and saves the X and Y location of that wall. And then what it does is it draws what's called a primitive, so basically a polygon. In this case, the polygon type that we're using is called a triangle strip. And we then take and add all of the vertexes to create the shadow that is cast from all four corners of that wall. It's essentially kind of like a cube shadow. We start at each corner, or we start at the first corner, and then we go out a thousand points, or a thousand, I suppose you could say, pixels, out in the direction of the player object to that particular wall corner. So the direction between the player object to that wall, we're just going to draw a line or draw a vertex that's a thousand points out in that direction and connect it to the first point. And then we're going to do that for all of the following corners. So hold X plus 32 is the right top corner. Hold X plus 32. Hold Y plus 32 is the bottom right corner of the wall. And so on and so forth. And it's the same thing for all of this. And then last but not least, we're going to reconnect it back to the beginning um, vertex. And that's going to draw a very nice cubular shadow out in the direction uh, away from the player to uh, its respective corner of the wall. And that's all there is to it. Then we want to draw the player view cone. Because without the player view cone, all that we have, it, we have a player that can see in 360 directions. We still get that really nice shadow casting effect and the walls only pop up when we can see them. But we're looking in all 360 degrees. So that may be what you want, but it may not. And if it's not what you want, then you have to draw a player view cone. And that's a very simple thing. We start right at the player's location, and then we draw a line that's way off at, um, so for example, since our, we're using a 90 degree view angle, this is going to be at plus 45 degrees to the direction the player is facing. In other words, half of the view angle we uh, we draw a line that goes out from the player in that direction for an, again a thousand which a thousand is just kind of an arbitrary number it's outside of uh, what the viewable area is when we're playing the game 
and that way we kind of have an, a quote unquote infinite uh, view casting shadow effect. Then what we do is we take and we add uh, 135 to the direction that the player is currently facing. Now, why 135? Well, that's because 135, if the player is looking directly up, 135 degrees is directly down and to the left at a 45 degree angle from the player. And because we're drawing it way out there, and then the next one we're drawing way out in 135 in the other side, so it'd be at the bottom right, it creates kind of a nice box effect. So we start off going in a line one direction, we draw what's essentially down, and then over, and then up, and then back at uh, the other angle, which is half of the view angle from the other direction. And then we reattach it back just to complete our triangle strip. And that's it. That's all it takes to create this really neat view effect. And from there, you can do all kinds of cool things. And with this particular view type, uh, you can create all kinds of neat situations. Times where the player can't see enemies, they can't see um, obstacles that may have appeared since they've been in a particular area. There's all kinds of neat stuff that you can do with this. And there's all kinds of additional optimizations you can do as well. For our example, each one of these walls is casting out a shadow. But if your game room was fixed, if you only had, say, 10 levels and you knew the exact layout of each 10 of those levels, well, you don't have to draw a shadow for every single one of the corners. You only have to draw a shadow for the outside corner of each connected wall. So for example, this corner, this corner, this corner, this corner. You don't have to do interior corners because the exterior corners are all that matter. Since the player is here, he's not going to be really casting a shadow that way. Uh, so any of the exterior corners that you see would be the only ones that you would have to draw. So instead of drawing you know, a whole ton of individual uh, rectangular polygons or cube polygons, you could just draw one that's in the shape of each one of these connected objects. And of course you'd have to separate each one for objects that were not connected to another object. So all of this could be one shadow but this would have to be a separate shadow, and these two would have to be a separate shadow, and each one of these would be, have to be a separate shadow. But still, oops, still it would be a very nice and optimized uh, way of doing things. So thank you for watching. You can see the download link is in the description. Uh, it's also in the video itself. And feel free to download this, use it, make cool stuff with it, and if you do make some cool stuff, please send it to me. I love this kind of effect. I love seeing it in games. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to see it more often now. So, again, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new. And have fun building.